Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we will discuss the topic of terrestrial magnetism that is the magnetic field produced by the Earth's surface. Oh, now the Earth rotates about an axis and that axis, if it rotates in this direction, is called the south to north axis and it is called geographic north or south right so this point is the geographic north pole of the earth this point is the geographic south pole of the earth now the magnetic field is ge generally not exactly along this line and actually when you like take a compass the compass never really points towards the geographic north pole it points towards the magnetic north pole and so we have this is the geographic axis by the way and then we have the magnetic axis which is tilted from the geographic axis by an angle of 11.5 degrees right and here at an angle of 11.5 degrees we can assume that there is a bar magnet why can we assume there is a bar magnet because experimentally we see that this is the pattern of magnetic field that is generally followed right other field lines might be like this I just draw them solid I think this is making it even more unclear right so these are how the electric field lines went now if it could have been we could have been really lucky and we could have lived on a planet in which the electric and magnetic uh, sorry in the, in the electric and magnetic field lines uh, or the geographic north south axis and the magnetic north south axis completely aligned but they don't and so when we look at this uh, magnetic field we say that we can actually model this magnetic field if we assume the earth to be a bar magnet placed at its center tilted at 11.5 degrees from the geographic north south axis now there's not really any bar magnet at the earth's center and these magnetic fields are produced due to molten iron present which moves when the earth rotates but to calculate that all is extremely complicated so we model it by a bar magnet placed at the center this point is called the magnetic south pole and this point is called the magnetic north pole right so I'll just write this as GN and GS and I'll write this as MS and MN right so whenever you take a compass it's actually pointing in the direction of magnetic field or towards the magnetic north pole not the geographic north pole they're quite near but not exactly at the same point right this axis is called the geographic axis this axis is called the magnetic axis right the magnetic dipole moment of this bar magnet is approximately 8 times 10 to the power 22 SI units I don't remember exactly what the units are but they don't matter right now right and this angle is 11.5 degrees so it's not a very large angle now our goal right now is to have some elements of this magnetic field which will help us uniquely determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at any point right so there are three particular things which are called the elements of the earth's magnetic field Uh, before that I just want to stress that everything you see now elements of the earth's magnetic field the fact that uh, uh, the earth behaves like a bar magnet all this is purely coincidental there's no reason a spherical shaped planet should have to have a magnetic field which behaves like a bar magnet as it happens we live on a planet whose magnetic field we observe to be somewhat similar to that of a bar magnet so instead of taking care of all the molten iron flowing which would be very complicated we decide to model the electric field by a bar magnet and see that the results are pretty accurate so the first thing is called uh, the declination and its symbol is theta the second is called the dip and its symbol is delta and the third is called BH which is the horizontal components of the Earth's magnetic field right the first two help us determine the direction of magnetic field and the third helps us to determine the magnitude 
So let's see what declination is really. The standard definition of declination is it is the angle made by I'll just remove the other two for now. The magnetic meridian and the geographic meridian. So what are these two terms? The magnetic meridian is a plane passing through the geomagnetic poles that is the magnetic north and south poles now of course between any two points an infinite number of planes pass but if you take three points which are not collinear then only one plane passes through them so the magnetic meridian is the plane passing through the geomagnetic poles and the given point What is the given point? That's the point where we're trying to calculate the magnetic field. So our goal is given a particular location, we should be able to say that at this location, the declination is 30 degrees, the dip is 45 degrees and the horizontal component is 80 Tesla. And from those three things, we should be able to calculate exactly the magnitude and direction of the Earth's magnetic field. I'll not write what the geographic meridian is. It is the plane passing through the geographic poles and the given point. Right. So what does the declination help us do? It tells us to one extent the plane through which the magnetic field is passing. So uh, let's say this is the geographic north, south, east, west. Right. And we are looking from the top. Right. The, this, the plane of the monitor is the flat ground and we are looking at it from the top. Right. So we don't really care right now what is the vertical or horizontal component of the magnetic field. Right now we care within this particular plane where does it lie. So if we are told that a declination is 20 degrees let's say. That means uh, from now okay we remember always that the positive angle is always taken in the anti-clockwise direction. So if the declination is 20 degrees, that means we move 20 degrees in this direction and this is the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. Now this is not just the direction of the Earth's magnetic field because it could be horizontal or it could have an upward vertical component or a downward vertical component. Right now we are just talking about which plane it is in as it regards to north, south, east and west. So to calculate the magnetic field at a point whose declination is 20 degree, the very first step is to point towards north and move towards the left anti-clockwise direction 20 degrees. Then you'll be pointing in a direction in which the magnetic field is. But right now you don't know whether the magnetic field points towards the 20th floor of a building or points towards your feet. Right, or is completely horizontal. You just know it is in that vertical plane, which vertic the vertical plane which is 20 degrees away from the geographic plane. Right, this is the magnetic meridian, this plane, and this plane is the geographic meridian. Right, so this is the declination. The second thing is the dip or delta. And the definition of the dip is the angle made sorry, by the Earth's magnetic field. and the horizontal direction. Right? So if the angle between the Earth's magnetic field and the horizontal direction is zero, then all you need to do is turn 20 degrees and face in this direction and the magnetic field will be in the horizontal direction. If the dip is let's say 5 degrees, then once you're facing in this direction and this is your eye level, then all you need to do is drop down 5 degrees and this is the direction of magnetic field. It's called dip because if you look at the Earth's magnetic field, it goes like this and we can see that in the southern hemisphere, these are the horizontal directions by the way, tangential. 
So in the southern hemisphere, it points up away um, above the horizontal direction, but in the northern hemisphere, it points below. So in the northern hemisphere, the magnetic field points downwards from the horizontal direction, and that's why it is called dip, and it is taken positive in the downward direction. Right. So before moving on the third thing, let me just show you how these two completely help us determine the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. So let's say we are given the declination is 30 degrees and we are given the dip is 15 degrees, let's say. What does that mean? So first of all, this is my north, south, east, west direction. I turn north and I move anti-clockwise 30 degrees. So I know my magnetic field is somewhere in this plane. Now if I am standing here like this, this is my face and I am looking at it from the top. This is how I am standing. Then the second figure I will draw is like this. This is my eye. Right. And this point is 30 degrees from the north. This is maybe the northern plane. I have turned 30 degrees from the northern plane. Now if the de declination is 30 degrees and the dip is 15 degrees, I will just remove this. This is actually confusing because I'm trying to draw a figure on two dimensions and I'm not a very good drawer or artist. But now you need to drop down your gaze 15 degrees within the vertical plane as well. Now you don't need to turn left or right. First you face north and you turn left 30 degrees. Then you dropped your gaze by 15 degrees from the horizontal direction. And now you completely know the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. You don't. You you might have been facing this way, facing this way. Doesn't matter. First point point towards north, then move in the direction which is the declination. That will give you the vertical plane in which the magnetic field is. Then if the dip is zero, it's in the horizontal direction. If the dip is negative, it's in the upward direction. And if the dip is positive, it's in the downward direction. Right. The third component is pretty simple, BH, and that's the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. Right. So let me just try to draw the figure which I've seen in a book, which makes things uh, clear. And I'll just try to draw this one properly. So this for me is right now the vertical direction. Right. And uh, this is the geographic north pole or the, ge the direction of the geographic meridian. Right. A certain angle away from this will be the magnetic north pole or the direction of the magnetic meridian. Right. And this is theta and uh, this is delta. And the difference between these two, I've, I'm just going to draw exactly as I see it in the book where I see it because I think that forced perspective actually helps you understand. I'll just draw it like this. Yeah, so I hope you get it now. These are two completely different planes. Right, I think I didn't draw this one properly enough. should be perpendicular so it should be something like this yeah so I think this figure should make it cle clear to you these are two different planes right I'm this is the vertical direction I'm just standing here this is the direction of the geographic North Pole I look there and I turn 30 degrees or an amount theta anti-clockwise direction but still I'm facing in the vertical direction I'm still facing straight ahead I'm not looking up or down Right. So now this is the direction of the magnetic north pole or the magnetic meridian. So this is turning left. And then this is turning down. So I face north, I turn left by an angle theta, then I look down by an amount delta. If delta is negative, I look up. And this gives me the direction of the magnetic field. Right, so this is as clear as I can make it. You turn left, but these two are both planes in the vertical direction, right? None of these planes is tilted. Both of these are vertical planes. One is the geographic north pole and the other is the magnetic meridian. Those planes have an angle theta between them. These two lines, both of these lines are horizontal, right? That is shown by this uh, plane which I've drawn here. Then you look down by an amount delta and this is B, this is not B H. So now once you know the direction completely, as soon as you know any one component of the magnetic field, you can calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field as well. So this BH 
is generally known it is the horizontal component of the magnetic field you could say why not just take b and the answer is we'll see this in the next video when we discuss magnetometers when we experimentally determine magnetic field it's much easier to determine the horizontal component of the magnetic field because we'll be doing our experiments by putting the apparatus on a table so it will act according to the horizontal component of the magnetic field just like we talked earlier when we saw that the compass points towards the horizontal direction of the magnetic field not towards the magnetic field right so from this we can see that bh is simply b cos delta or b is equal to bh by cos delta so if i know horizontal component and i know the dip then i can calculate the actual magnitude as well right and this will be bh and this will be bv the vertical component of the magnetic field right so if you are having trouble i uh, with this figure i suggest two things one focus on these planes which i have drawn which are themselves at an angle or look at it this way you just pu you put your eyes in the horizontal direction and look straight towards the north then you turn left by an amount theta still while looking in the horizontal direction then you look down by an amount delta and the direction will be you will be looking in is the direction of the magnetic field so using these three elements the declination the dip and the horizontal component we can calculate the magnitude and the direction of magnetic field at any point in the next video titled magnetometers we'll see how we can measure the dip at a point and how we can measure the magnetic field of the earth or of any particular bar magnet using the analogs of galvanometers which are called magnetometers thank you